Warning, the following is very disturbing. If you are easily offended or have a weak stomach, please leave now. Mike, 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 what day is it, Mike? Mike, 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 what day is it, Mike? What day is it, Mike? It is Saturday, and it's time for another episode of the Other Mike and Mike Show. I'm Mike W. I am Mike T. Bringing you all the nonsense that's going on in the world. Last show for 2014. Yes. I just realized that now that you said that. That's crazy. Yeah. Time's flying by. It's going to be spring again before you know it. Don't tease me. Well, look, man, look, we're having like spring weather around here. So it's like, you know, winter's not even here yet. I mean, I'm sure we're going to get hit eventually, but maybe not. Damn, dude, it's been, you know, 40, 50 degrees and sometimes sunny, sometimes cloudy every day of the fucking week. The only problem with that is where I live, there's fucking knuckleheads and they're outside in our courtyard because it's so warm. So like uh, they're out there partying all hours of the night. They're out there again last night. I got in a confrontation last weekend. Yeah, I remember you telling me that. <laughs> yeah, so and it's the same shit yesterday. Yesterday was the same shit. It's like, listen, I got to come down there. Somebody dying. Right. It, yeah, I mean, uh, quiet down. You know, when you're in a public It's a public like courtyard, that. dude. It's a tiny little courtyard with, with like 10, 10 families around it. It's not like it's a lot of space. Right. Show, you know, show some respect. It's not a college dormitory. Exactly. Don't be a horse's ass. Yep, go to a bar. That's not going to happen because kids are cheap. Yeah, true. These kids are knuckleheads. But anyway, so uh, how was your how was your Christmas? All right. Um. Yeah. You know, to be honest with you, I just sat home. Uh, Rub one out. I, I cooked. Yeah, I cooked myself some food. Uh, shoulder dipped a little bit. Watched some TV and went to sleep. Speaking of shoulder dip, I learned a new trick. Southern Comfort. Heat it up. Pour it in eggnog. It's amazing. It's amazing. And I don't like eggnog, but when you throw some Soko in it, my shoulder almost dislocated. <laughs> I dipped it hard. You know, I don't think I've ever had eggnog. What? I don't think I have. Come on. I, I, I swear to you. Stop it. I'm serious. I don't think I've ever had eggnog in my entire life. I think maybe when I was younger, maybe I was offered to me as like, you know, and just the name of it sounded gross. So I didn't try it. But I don't think I've ever tried eggnog in my life. Well, that's interesting. Well, maybe it's time to start. Yeah, I might have to give it a try. I did see a story when I was going through looking for uh, news stories that a guy that went to the hospital by drinking too much eggnog. Damn. Um, yeah. Chugging eggnog sends man to Utah sends Utah man to hospital. I thought it was our pal Ryan Bennett. Then I realized he moved to Austin where all the other uh, liberal hippies. <laughs> That's where all the liberals live in Texas. Which he's one of them. But all my other pals that are from Texas hate Austin. It's very strange. Anyway. So New Year's uh, New Year's is coming up. Any plans? <sighs> Probably not, because uh I go in for surgery on Monday. So Oh my god, this Monday? Yep. Gallbladder? Yep. Okay, so by Monday night, you'll be shoulder dipping again. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. You know, they say that the recovery time varies for people. So, uh, you know, hopefully it's not, you know, more than a night for me. And, but yeah, I mean, we'll see what happens. You know what I mean? But, uh, we don't really do much for New Year's Eve, to be honest with you. No, you know, normally. Last year we did. We went out a little bit. Um, but this year we'll see. You know, I, I don't know. My wife would probably have to work that day, New Year's Eve. So she might be tired and might not even feel like going out. Yeah, I haven't done something on New Year's. I can't remember how long. I mean, it's been ages. Yeah, it's really not that big a deal to me anymore. Um, or was it ever? I mean, I don't think it ever was for me. Well, when I was younger, kind of. I mean, I mean, it, New Year's itself like wasn't a big deal. But the excuse to, you know, shoulder dip hard, right? You know, was there. You know, um, it's always you always look for excuse to shoulder dip, but the older you get, you don't need an excuse. You just like fuck it, I'm dipping my shoulders today. Yeah, just do it. Yep, it's loose. I got a little icy hot on it. I'm yep. ready to dip it. I mean, I've celebrated New Year's. You know, I don't know how many years now. You know, so many different years. It's just yeah, but what do you do? I mean, like I make little cocktail wieners that are like frozen. I pop them in the toaster oven. <laughs> I see the ball drop. I have myself a little soco. Shoulder dip it right in the bed. Yep, and that's it. That's it. I don't need enough, you know. I don't need anything extravagant anymore. No, nope. you know, I don't care. You know, I don't want to be amongst the twenty-one-year-old. No interest. Fucking mess of you know. No interest. No interest whatsoever. No, me neither. You know, 
So for those of you that celebrate, Happy New Year. And uh, we will see you on uh, the next show will be in 2015, which is very strange. It's very strange how time is flying by. I know. It, it's it's crazy. It really is. I can't believe it. I mean, this is what, you know, episode 16. We've been, you it's know. Four months. Four months. Time is flying by. And and you sent me a link. First of all, we should make a couple announcements. One, what was that? We got voted top ten podcasts with some some nonsense? Well, yeah. I mean, what it was is I was uh, – I was just doing some searching on some podcasting on some different places to maybe submit your podcast to. Right. And I saw like podcast of the month. You know, this place had one podcast of the month on podcast land. I'm like, oh, I'm like, you know, let me go out to this place called podcastland.com and, you know, maybe it's a place to submit our podcast, this and that. Well, here we were already in the top 10 <laughs> out there <laughs> for uh, the uh, society and culture subject. So, I mean, we were ranked eighth. Yeah, that's very cool. So I was like, oh, well, I guess I don't have to fucking submit it. It's already there. What it does is it looks like that they pull everything off of iTunes, right? That's what it, that's okay. like what it looks like to me. They pull the RSS feeds. Fair enough. Yeah, so it was pretty cool. I thought it was cool. Yeah, that is cool. So anybody that does, uh, that's been listening since day one, or if you're a new listener, all we do is ask you to tell a friend, have them download it, get it subscribed to iTunes, Stitcher, Zoom now, although only uh, my pal Ian subscribes to zoom nobody else knows what the hell it is <laughs> yeah i mean there's like not even a link to uh, that i can find you know like to itunes you can like get a link to the show or stitcher you can get a link to the show zoom uh, i don't see any links you just have to like open up zoom it's yeah. like a program you it's weird it's and uh you just have to search it just search for the other mike and mike show if zoom's your your thing yeah, not, knock yourself out. It's on there now. So go go there. Go to uh, but go to Stitcher. Go to iTunes. Have your friends go there. Just hit the subscribe button. And if you have more than a, uh, like a minute, even if you put up, if you put up in there, dip that shoulder. Give us some sort of review. We need some more reviews on there. Uh, that would be very cool. And yeah. tell a friend. Theothermikes.com. Go check it out. All of our social media is on there. And hit up the other mics uh, Twitter feed because when you hit my Twitter feed, which is Vader loves WGW, and a lot of the folks from my old clown table days have been sending me direct messages. I don't. I'm, Mike. Mike T. will tell you. Mike W. is a fucking train wreck when it comes to social media. I'm a total mess, and I saw that I had 22 private messages on there <laughs> that were weeks old. So I apologize for not getting back. I'm a mess. I, I, I just saw people were asking me questions of like two shows ago. I'm like, why are you not just sending it to the other mics? Because Mike T. is on that 24 seven. Right. And I'm a train wreck. Mike T. sends me messages. It takes me like a day to respond. I'm a total mess. <laughs> I know it's uh, like uh, randomly like a week after I tweeted something, I'll get like a retweet notification and it'll be you. Yeah, because I'm a train wreck when it comes to social media. It's Facebook, fun. I have it, I think, linked to my phone and I don't even have carry my phone all the time. A lot of times my phone is just I just like if I'm home, my phone's not in my pocket. I put it in, like my I have like a little bin where my wallet and keys are. Right. I don't pay attention. So it's no disrespect if I don't get back to you. It's just that I'm getting old. Yeah, just use our social media and we'll get to you pretty quick fucking kids drive me nuts too what's that my kids drive me nuts you know kids kids are just like they're always they're always just need something it's just uh, i can't i can't multitask anymore i used to be able to multitask like a like a motherfucker now i'm just uh meh oh, those damn kids they're always there everything like that so but. anyway speaking of kids we saw this uh, article this week that there seems to be this trend of moms or milfs banging young little kids I don't know, little high school kids. First we saw it, my wife used to watch this show called Cheer Mom, and uh, one of the girls on there, you know, it was, it, it was set like in Nebraska or Arkansas or some nonsense. It was a bunch of suburban moms. You can look this up. I'm sure it'll pop up. And a uh, husband and wife ran a cheerleading, I guess a camp or a company to 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 travel in a cheerleading group. It, to me, it was bizarre because me che- cheerleading is with the school, but this is like an independent cheerleading group where they have like almost like a dance club you know what I mean? Like dance when girls or boys go to dance. Right. And it was strange because a lot of the moms on there were milfs. Some were, some were just disastrous wildebeests. But it was fun to watch a little bit. Like my wife would make me watch it and I would, instead of just uh, punching the floor and saying I want to watch something else, you know, I'd, just, uh, I'd watch these, these, these girls dance and shit and do these cheer. And I'm just like, ah, they're all bickering. How much is this a staged? And then I see that the one girl... Who's got like two other kids and a husband started banging like a twelve year old, <laughs> and then the show got pulled and uh, canceled, and the mother's in jail for like ten years or something. 
That's insanity. It was insanity. So I'm just like, why is this happening all the time? And then this week we see this other. Do you, what, do you have the woman's name? It was like some kind of, uh, and it was right in your neck of the woods, right? Like Pottsville or something. Yeah, Pottsville, Pennsylvania. Uh, Iris Gibney. Okay, and she was kind of hot when I saw the picture. <laughs> no, I know. I saw it was like a mugshot or something. She didn't seem too bad at all. She seemed like a milf. Yeah, I mean, and, and the thing is this, right? The kid was fucking seventeen. Uh, it's not. I don't know. I mean, no. Uh, no this is what were you thinking? Well, there's no doubt that that's consensual, right? <laughs> and uh, I think the. I wish when I was seventeen years old that there were hot teachers that were going around banging kids. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I know that it sounds crazy to people. Like, oh my gosh, she should know better than that. The kid. <laughs> I got the music behind you. <laughs> this kid is 17 years old. He knows full well what he's doing, and he's loving life. He's banging 42-year-old cougar. When I was 17, <laughs> it was a very good year. <laughs> it was a very good year. Taking for... mills from the rear and getting blown in the park. <laughs> That's how season two of The Sopranos started with that song. Oh, my God. But, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's a Potsdam PA. You know, it's not too far from here, maybe an hour and a half from me. Get a yingling, get a blowjob. The car was illegally parked in Holland Back Park. I think and it was... wasn't public. So, I mean, that's another thing I guess that we should. It wasn't, it wasn't public, too, right? Is that it was yeah they were having sex inside a parked car in Hollenbach Park. But here's the here's the listen I get it if I we're dudes but if we had a daughter and it was reversed we'd be killing somebody. So there's a little bit of a double standard there. For, no, not a little bit. There's a huge double standard there. Huge double standard because as but me as a father I'd kill some motherfucker. Kill him if 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 you know if if a 42 year old teacher male teacher was banging my 17 year old daughter. I'm beating him to death. There's some bad shit that you're right. There's no guns either. It is personal. You're going to feel every every punch that I hit on you, and I'm going to break every fucking bone in your body. Right. It's weird. You know, it's weird how that happens, right? Like the double standard. It's like, you know, if it happens to a 17-year-old man, boy, whatever you want to call a 17-year-old, um, you know, Come the on, man buddy, in us comes out and say, oh, man, that's man. great. When I was 17. I wish I was getting, you know, banged by my 42-year-old teacher. Hot a, teacher. Hot teacher. But, like, what's the mindset? Like, my wife saw this, and you saw she put it up on Facebook. She was fuming. Like, fuming. She was like, I would kill that woman. Right. I mean, maybe my feelings would be different if it was my kid, right? You know, I don't have a kid, but if I had a 17-year-old son and... Yeah, you know, I, I would be mad, too. Even with the If this was a 42-year-old woman with one of my kids, yeah, I'm going full full rampage. Right. Like, I can't tell you how I would react then. But I can, you know, but the jokester in me or whatever you want to say or the pig in me, though, you know... you know, Me, too. Sp- wants to say now like that's awesome you know i rub one out to it right 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 thinking about it yeah like i'm looking at her picture and like i got a new any new keyboard right <laughs> like i want to kill the kid just in jealousy right but like what goes through your head like what you first of all you got to know that it's illegal is there no moral compass going on there like the moral compass broke and it's spinning out of control like you're in a, a bad episode of lost what is happening there two you know you're gonna get caught you're in public the woman's got a husband what do you think he's going to say? Do you have children? I mean, like the the last one I looked at, girl had kids. I mean, I can see if it's a teacher, 24 years old, 26 years old, the kid's 17. That that You're a little bit closer in age. But when you're 42 years old, like housewife, like male for three kids, and you're with a 17-year-old kid, what are you doing? Right, right. She's just very unhappy with, I mean, I mean, you got to like question her. Dude, get a pint of Haagen-Dazs. We all get unco- unhappy once in a while. Right, gotta right. Blow a child. Right. No, I agree 100 percent. But, you know, now going back to the illegal thing, depending upon the state that, that this I mean, it happened in PA. So I don't know the PA laws. Probably like, legal there, depending on what part of PA. Western PA, probably legal. Yeah. I mean, it just depends. I mean, dude, the legal age in like Hawaii for non or, 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 or agreeable consensual sex is like fucking 15, like a like a 15 year old is considered an adult to That's have insane. sex. I didn't know that. That's insanity. That's it. That's fucking crazy. It is. It's seriously like what is that? That's like that's like Thailand. I mean, come on. <laughs> what am I doing flying out to like Hanoi? I could just go to Honolulu. Consensual sex age. I got to fig- You know, I got to figure. We got to. We got to look that up. Yeah. No, I'm here now. Consensual age by consensual age of consent in North America. 
Here we go. Because I'm still a child. No. Well, that's. Like, I, I mean, can't go cha cha in there and just be like, let me take uh, this little Hawaiian 15 year old girl home. That's just filthy. That's, it's fucking disgusting. That's like a federal offense. I can't be doing that. Right. It's disgusting. And, um,. I mean, maybe if I was 18 and high school senior and she was 16, I might get away with it. Well, I, I think that's a little different. Um, yeah, but I don't know how the, what you're talking laws. I mean, I don't think that, like if this 42-year-old woman can't go flying into, you know, Maui and just picking up a 17-year-old high school senior. I still think it's illegal there. Here it is. The age of consent in Hawaii is 16. There is, however, a close in age exemption. So here it is, which allows those aged 14 and 15 to consent to sex with those less than five years older. Yeah, so a 14-year-old can have sex with, with an 18-year-old le- legally. Yeah, I can see that. So there's that little exemption. But a 16-year-old is, is allowed to have sex with a 50-year-old. No. So, yo, yes, yes. What? Yes, the age of consent in Hawaii is 16. But the exemption for 14 and 15-year-olds is that they have to be less than five years older than them. But 16 and up is free game. That's so bizarre. So, yeah, a 30-year-old could legally date a 16-year-old without any problems. The parents couldn't, like, call it in or... So any- we would just kill them and bury him or her in the middle of nowhere. Right. Georgia, it's also 16. It's Georgia. Huh? You got three kids on average by 16. <laughs> and Florida, surprisingly, is 18. You know, I thought that, you know, maybe Florida would be, like, 11. You know, Georgia has to bend the rules because of all the inbreeding. <laughs> Connecticut is 16. Really? Yep. I can see that. Yeah, I mean, it's... I got uh, pal Josh, I'm thinking. It's crazy. Inbred. Yeah, I mean, it's really crazy. Colorado, 17. Okay. Yeah, but still, I, I still can't see a 42-year-old to 17-year-old. Me either. I don't, I, don't, I don't get it. Me either. I mean, those are straight-up barracudas, man. Barracuda. I wonder if that's playing on the radio when she's... While she's getting it in with him. While she's blowing the kid. You know what I mean? She's like unzipping the fly. Right? She's like getting really into it, head bobbing up and down. Kid has no idea because like heart was popular before he was even born. So here's the rule, the law for Pennsylvania. The age of consent in Pennsylvania is 16 years of age. Okay. But a corruption of minors against adults corrupting the morals of minors under 18 years of age exists, which means, in fact, age of consent in, Pen- in Pennsylvania is 18 years of age. So it is legal for minors 16 to 17 years old to have sex with each other, but not a partner who is 18 years or older. So they were breaking the law. Crazy. In the state of Pennsylvania. Correct. Crazy. That is crazy. The, you know, and and the fact is, you know, like how we're sitting here and we can say that we can high five one another because, you know, that's awesome. I wish that happened to me. But <laughs> right. But the reality of the situation is, is that I think it's a problem. Uh, it's a serious issue. And, 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 and if it was my kid, I would not be happy. No, for sure. So, you know, we, you know, we can sit here and joke about it all we want. But when it came down, you know, when it comes down to brass tacks, if it's somebody close to me, it's I'm dropping the fucking hammer. I agree completely. All right. Well, when I was 17. There you go. So um, I'd be curious to see what other people think. I know guys and and a lot of times guys and, and girls will be on a different side to this because there's such a double standard here. Right. And I think that that's in most cases. Probably true. You know, I mean, you're always going to get those guys to say, yeah, fuck yeah. It was just happened when I was a kid. I mean, shit, I just said it myself. Right. Right. And uh, but you know, but you're also going to get, you know, you you got to look at the reality of the situation and and kind of take jokes aside, you know, or put jokes aside for a little bit and just think about the seriousness of the issue because it is a 42 year old woman having sex with a 17 year old kid. Fail is not is a problem for sure. It's illegal. <laughs> All right, now it's time to move on to a new segment. We were talking a little bit before we came on here today about things that get under Mike T skin. So new segment. Maybe we'll do this once in a blue moon when Mike has something he wants to rant about. But things that are under Mike T's skin. I've got you under my skin. I've got you deep in the heart of me. So what's got you all bent out of shape? The group Anonymous. (laughs) (laughs) 
right? <laughs> it really, it really, like, I try not to let things bother me so much. And usually things don't. I can just kind of let it roll off my shoulder. I'll move on. It doesn't really, you know, things that don't directly affect me, I, nor- nor- I normally don't give a fuck about. But something like the group of anonymous, I was just out on Facebook and an article that just came out, you know, over the Christmas holiday, anonymous attacked the Sony PlayStation networks and the Xbox live networks. Um, they shut it down. So people couldn't play their games online and things like that. Right. Right. So first off, we'll tackle that. You got all these kids, you know, these 10, 11, 12 year old kids that are so excited because they got their games for Christmas. Um, and they go to play it, and they can't because these fucking guys shut down the network, right? They illegally hack these networks, and they shut them down. Um, you showed them. Yeah, they showed them. Oh, yeah. And another thing they did on top of it is they, like, hacked, like, UFC.TV, the PlayStation Network, the Xbox Network, Amazon. And they fucking released, like, 13,000 credit card numbers. Well. Like, what the fuck is wrong with these people? <laughs> they sit there. And they'll preach for days about how these politicians are are breaking the laws or, you know, I know the UFC, they were really pissed about because they supported the anti-piracy law. Um, so they fucking hacked their network. Well, they talk about all these quote unquote lawbreakers and all they ever do is break the law. True. I mean, when you're hacking, when you hack anything, it's immediately a federal offense, right? It's cyber terrorism is what it is. They're. They're a fucking terrorist group. Treason. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it's, I don't know about treason. They are treason. Ter- Guantanamo. Throw them in there. Waterboard them. Right. I mean, you stick a couple of these fucking assholes in Gitmo for a couple of days. I agree. They'll never do it again. It's all, just take away their Mountain Dew and they will never do it again. Right. I mean, take away their internet connection or, you know, maybe their mom will kick them out someday out of their fucking basement. Take away their Warcraft account, their Taco Bell, and uh, some Mountain Dew, and that's the end of Anonymous. Yeah. I mean, it's ridiculous, man. It really is ridiculous. They, they, they're they proving nothing. It's not like they, they have this big movement and they're, like, changing the world. They're a fucking nuisance. I mean, what point did they prove by – I mean, 13,000 people that did nothing to them, right? That did nothing to them. Their credit card information is now out to the public. You know, think of how, how you know how many people now are fighting to get you know false charges off of their credit cards or lost money. You know, maybe it's a check card and now their bank account is drained. Like that's fucking ridiculous. Oh, it's terrible. And how many of those people at one point? How many of those retards that you hacked were probably were sympathetic to your cause at one point that you now now they hate you? <laughs> right. <laughs> Right. That's another thing. Like, oh, man, you know, like this anonymous group, they're doing, you know, they're they're uh, uh, they mean well. They're trying to do good. Th- Wait a minute. They took my fucking credit card information. They released it. To- oh, what the fuck? They fucking released my credit card number because they're pissed off because the Xbox Live released the interview. They sh- <laughs> are, 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 are you kidding me? You know what oh, I mean? No. Oh, no. Oh, hell no. You all got to be out so goddamn minds. Fucking A. And it's just, you know, it's things like that that just bother me. You know, I mean, you know, Anonymous is comparable to the fucking riots in Ferguson. <laughs> you know, they're all breaking the law and fucking shit up to try to prove a point that they never prove. Right. You know, they break the law to protest breaking the law. It makes no sense. It makes no sense. It's like me jumping off a building because I have an itchy back. It makes no sense. I've done that before. <laughs> Jump. I freaking jumped off buildings, too. It fucking hurts. These guys, you know what they're doing, right? That's it. I doubt they can afford pot. That's probably why they fucking hack the credit card information. They probably use it. That's probably how they buy their equipment. Less Doritos, more pot. Yep. That's the way I, I look at it. Just, you know, I'm sure that some of the things they do is for a good cause. But, like, when you do shit like this, man, yeah. I lose all respect for people that do shit like that. You know, I don't care what your motives are. You know, I don't care if you want to change the world and shut down the government. I don't give a fuck. But now you're attacking innocent people who have done nothing to you. No, I agree. And, you know, you're just making this the situation, you know, and they tweet about it. They tweeted about it. They're, you know, if you got to like the Anonymous, they like have a Twitter account and like they're all happy about it. They call it the Christmas lols, you know, like the LOLs about 
releasing all this information and hacking the networks and yeah, you know they're, proud just, of, they're just stupid. Yeah, they're proud of themselves. They're proud of themselves for breaking the law. Like, you know, fuck you. You know, I hope someday, you know, you fall on a goddamn spike. What a special friend you are. <laughs> Fucking douches. And gets under my skin. It fires me up. Under my skin. There you go. That's what's under Mike T's skin. I've got you. Deep in the heart of Mike deep T. Deep in the, the heart, heart of, of Mike me. T. All right, so fuck anonymous. That's what we have to say today. Yeah. Go to college and try to change the world instead of... You know. Yeah. Well, they probably went to college or just uh, put down, just put down the, the taco wrap. You know, you got salsa all over your fucking keyboard as you're blocking out the, uh, the Call of Duty games for 12-year-olds. Yep. Nice one job. Greatest, yep. One of the greatest images of quote-unquote anonymous is from South Park with that, with, <laughs> with that guy with the guy fox mask on, the big fat guy sitting there, you know, at the... Uh, exactly this desk it's amazing like that's how i picture almost every single member of anonymous you know what i had no idea it even happened until you told me so it didn't affect the people that actually have uh buying power right you affected 12 year olds who the people that we would give the games to right right yeah fa- fantastic can you know congrats for ruining a 12 year old's christmas yeah thanks thanks for nothing thank god i bought a backup system okay. different different brand so you didn't hack all their stuff i had to buy it i bought an old school sega you know, Sega Genesis? Man. When it has like 40 games preloaded. The kids love that shit because they love Sonic, man. Everything everything comes around. Sonic the Hedgehog? Oh, yeah. Sonic love the Hedgehog. It. Oh, man. They're like obsessed. They like that more than they like uh, the new stuff. Right. So you know what? Fuck you, Anonymous. We're all good here. Yep. We're we don't fucking need a network. Exactly. So uh, real quick, I want to talk some... How far are we into this? All right. We're about a half hour in, so we've got plenty of time. I want to talk, before we get into news and stuff like that, I'm going to talk... A little recap, a little, little classic rock. You and I have talked some rock. First of all, let's say goodbye to Joe Cocker. Joe Cocker passed away this week. Whether, yeah. or not, you're, right? whether or not you're a big fan or not, he had his place in music for sure. Uh, here's a little help from my friends, a little clip. Woodstock, 1969. Oh, All right, so rest in peace, Joe Cocker. That is my favorite rend- rendition of that song. I love that Woodstock version because he sounds amazing. And if and uh, if you've never heard Joe Cocker sing before, or, or no, sorry, seen him, seen him is what I'm trying to get out here. And all of a sudden, when he's his looks, especially back at Woodstock, does not go with his voice. <laughs> oh no, and he's all over the place, like he's having some kind of grand mal seizure. Right, and the second he starts belting out the words, it's like fuck. <laughs> you know, I I freaking like Joe Cocker. I mean, I don't you know, I don't own every single one of his his albums, but he but he has some great songs. Yeah, he had his place for sure, for sure. Um, play a little more. <laughs> That's a great shot too. Him, he's all over on this video. Oh, for sure. It's fucking amazing. So uh, yeah, rest in peace, Joe. And speaking of more about. Classic rock. I think uh, you and I were talking about this before, and some of my pals were talking about this. We've decided to retire from Kiss Cruising. I know it's a big shock to some of my pals. It's a shock, right? Because I just went and I talked about how great it was, and it was right. Like we had like a thirty-minute segment about it. Listen, the Kiss Cruise is amazing. I'm not going to say it's not amazing, but you know what happened? The Kiss Cruise jumped the shark. I think that's inevitable. I think everything in life jumps the shark, doesn't it? And if it doesn't, what do you mean by that? I'm not sure what you mean by. By uh, that phrase, I don't. You never I, heard "Jump the Shark"? No, I've never heard that phrase. Stop before. it! I swear to you. Stop <laughs> yourself! You live in a cave. I've never had eggnog, and I've never heard "Jump the Shark." Jump the Shark is when it gets to, when it, it references from Happy Days when the Fonz jump the shark in the tank on water skis. When okay. you know the show is at the that, that's it. it. It was at its peak at one point, and now it's on its way down. Oh, okay. It's over. I get it. It'll now. never be the same again because it jumped the shark. Right. Okay. That's that's pretty much in a nutshell where that comes from. So to us. Kiss Cruise 5 was announced. You know what I mean? Right. And we get an email, and they always do this every year. And, you, and there's so many people that go because it sells out that you have a time and date to book. So our time and date is January 5th uh, at 5.15 p.m. That's when you call, you book, you pick your show, you pick how you want your ticket with or, uh, your picture with or without makeup with the band Kiss. And you pick show one, show two, and your seats. Okay. The sooner you book, the better your seats. So if you want to stand in the orchestra or the pit where it's standing room only, 
it's the first come, first get to book. And if you want to sit in a row, like we usually sit in the front row where the seats are center because we've been on all four cruises and we have a pretty good booking time. Okay. Everybody wants the, the inside. But this year, it, it, it's almost like it's Groundhog Day to me. It's just over and over and over. It's yeah, same- you know what I mean? It's just like it's the same shit. And people and, and my wife got me to go. Dee's a diehard Kiss fan. We have Gene Simmons in the goddamn kitchen. Kisses all over the house. And she loved it. The first Kiss Cruise was just her and I. It was the first time we were away. No kids. We didn't know anybody. We talked to Mike and Michelle Blozer from Alaska. The only two people I talked to on the cruise ship the whole time. But it was me and the wife spending alone time the first time we ever done that for, for kids. So... To us, it, you know, it was amazing. Then we became friends with a bunch of folks. We had Kiss Cruise 2. We became part of the Kiss Cruise Maniacs, and we, we had uh, some fun. We got to hang out with some people. I met certain Ninja Turtles there, and it was a blast. It was an absolute... Kiss Cruise 2 was the ama- was amazing. Absolutely amazing. And then Kiss Cruise 3 was so over the top because we met new friends, and, we, we you know, throughout the year, you're talking to everybody, and it just it became more about the people than the cruise itself. It's about hanging out. It's about seeing the family reunion of rock and roll, which is amazing. I can't thank enough for the friends. The Becketts, who I will still remain pals with for life. You make, you make friends for life. For sure. And I, can, and I have a laundry list of folks. The youngins, my boy Josh. I mean, we've, become, we've all become tight. But it comes a time where you've got to say, oh, 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 this is a lot of money just to hang out with people. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like they, they up the price. Kiss is going to play Kiss Alive as their indoor show, which if this was Kiss Cruise 3, I'd be like, yeah, that's amazing. But it becomes a time where my wife was like, I don't even, we didn't even want to go see it last year, where we just skipped out. It's like, why are we going on Kiss Cruise and not seeing it? We didn't go see the Sail Away show. The Sail Away show, the first two years, was nothing that you've ever seen. Kiss acoustic, no makeup, we're all singing along and dancing, and now it becomes... To us, it's it's old hat. So I can see the new pokes coming in saying it's amazing, but when you see it year after year after year, it loses that, you know, where you don't get those butterflies, you don't care. We didn't even watch last year. We sat there and did shots of tequila while it was playing on the background. <laughs> right. And like my wife was saying, you know, she wants to do some new stuff, and she's the Kiss fan, and it's weird. When she was like, you want to go, you go, and I'll meet you down there. We'll all go to, like, Disney afterwards with some of the friends. Because And I thought about it, and I said, well, maybe. Uh, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll see if... if uh, Beckett wants a roommate, but I, he already has a roommate, so I wasn't going to push that angle. And I was just like, do I, do I want to go? You know, my boy Josh isn't going. So many people are not going because it's the same thing. It's old hat. And the people that are going and they're defending it like it's some, like the Alamo, it's like kids could go out there and play Poison Covers, and they would say, this is the greatest thing. You're not Kiss fans. Well, it's not to being a rock and roll fan. It's just that you don't want to see the same shit year after year. And it's, it's, it's disappointing because I'm going to miss seeing the people from Australia or the people you don't get to see unless you're on the Kiss Cruise. I feel like somebody died a little bit. And you never know what happens. I may throw a Hail Mary and leave my wife home and go. But I, even I don't want to go. It's a lot of money. That's the thing, right? Like, it, it, and, you know, just like you're saying, like the people, your friends and the people, it, that's one of the, you know, that's probably the biggest reason to go, right? Like, you know, especially when you're meeting people from Australia and you're friends with these people and you get to see them on a yearly basis. But the fact of the matter is, is just like you said, like it's expensive to do the same thing every year, to shell out that kind of money on a yearly basis to do the exact same thing. Um, Great. I can see that. I can see how it can get old. You know, you know, it's, you know, all right, why am I going to do this this year when I did it the last five years? I could put this money towards another trip that I've never done. Well, yeah, we booked the 80s cruise. Right. I saw saw you do that and that'll be awesome i think that that'll be fantastic but we gotta wait until february 28th of 2016 which is a long wait it is so i said to d listen why don't we get a couple of our pals and we'll go to disney world right after the kiss cruise comes in and we're gonna go to disney with the beckett's if they'll go and josh said he might come down and sit and gave her and i said we'll have a big clan and we can listen to kiss in the room and shoulder dip and we'll have our own little kiss party right instead of spending thousands of dollars and the people that go, and then we would see that would go. I mean, the only person I hang out with is Josh. He's the, he's like by my side, like if it was the Mike and Josh show. You know what I mean? He's the guy that's with me day and night. I'll meet you in the morning. We start drinking. We high five when we go to sleep. I'll see you in the morning. We'll start drinking. Everybody else, they come over, they hug you, and they, and they go on their merry way. So it's that's a lot of money for somebody to come over and hug me. Even if you sat with me for a while, like uh, you know, and the other only other person would be the Becketts. 
But even then, I mean, they, they're into it. They live, like John Beckett lives Kiss. He goes and puts on the Eric Carr makeup. He's got to make the rounds. And it's just, that's not, that's not us. You know what I mean? Right. That's not us. To us, we don't even care about going to see the band. I mean, we don't even, they're going to play in Vegas. And a lot of our pals are going to go out to Vegas. And I said today, well, let's go out for a weekend in Vegas. And we'll go out and see them there. And she was like, you know, I don't even know if I want to go and see them there. I might go to Vegas and see the guys. She goes, I'm kind of like, like done with Kiss a little bit. Which I never thought I'd see the day. I think she's just getting like a little Kiss burnout. She wants to see other stuff. She goes, I want that Butterflies again, like the first couple cruises. And last cruise was just you getting hammered. And the pre-party was great. But, you know, we'll, maybe we'll do our own pre-party for the 80s cruise and start something new. Yeah, there you go. I mean, it, it, life is about new traditions sometimes right and you're never too old to start a new one and sometimes it's just time to start a new one it's you know it's just time to start something new and well i'll tell you what though i'd i'd love a i'd love a tradition of going to vegas maybe not to see kiss but right i'll go see some fucking wayne newton i don't give a shit i just want to go to vegas well we should plan that yeah we should but even if we go to see kiss you can go if you don't want to go see kiss i mean it's a lot less expensive to see them at the joint at the hard rock there than it is on a, in the caribbean right correct and they'll play all the hits so knuckleheads like you will know the songs they're playing for sure for sure and i'd rather shoulder dip with my pals out in vegas where you know when the show lets out we're not back on a boat in the middle of the ocean what are we gonna do sit there and pay another 35 dollars for five beers no, we're going to shoulder dip to the blackjack table and get free drinks while we, we take that $35 and bet it. For sure. <laughs> it just get destroyed while we try to win money. Exactly. For or, sure. you know, we go see some shows. There's a million other things to do, and I think it's just time because, to me, like another thing, I said, this is what it started to turn it into. Big Ben. Parliament again. Yes. We know. Big Ben. Parliament. <laughs> you remember this? <laughs> Big Ben. There's Big Ben again, kids. That's so funny, man. That was on yesterday. And it, actually, this it was European Vacation, and then and uh, then they played the first one right after it. Love them. Loved, I love those movies. <laughs> Chevy Chase. Yeah. I mean, that's what it's turning into. And, it's, and I'll tell you, when my booking time comes and goes, it'll be painful. And when that week comes... And that's the week I've looked forward to for the last four. This will be the fifth year, and it'll be painful. It'll be not not painful physically, but it's just like, man, I, I just I, I miss those people. I miss that week alone, but at the same time, we just have to do other stuff, man. I have two kids. I, I can't afford all that stuff, and I just to us, it doesn't have that oomph anymore. Right. And to show out that kind of money, you got to have that oomph. You got to. You got to have that feeling of, you know. Yeah. Of- uh, 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 of not wanting to miss it when you can start to live without it it's time to move on to something else agree wholeheartedly and that's what happened to us so if any of my pals i've met from those cruises are listening to this and didn't know i was going or didn't re- thought i was joking listen still be pals for life hit me up you got my address and i i'd rather go and visit folks from carolina florida wherever you're from Connecticut, Calgary. I'd rather spend my money and go see you and us ha- have new times together than us going through the same, what, three, four days for thousands and thousands of dollars. Well, what we should do is, and I really want to do this a, a few times in 2015, is I want to plan a couple, uh, you know, on site location style shows. And, you know, we can invite people to show up and, you know. Yeah, I'd be into that. Do a podcast from a bar or a podcast from anywhere. You know what I mean? Just a couple on-site live shows, and I think I think it'd be a lot of fun. We should do a back-to-back Mike and Mike and Kodo in Dallas. That would be amazing. When I go and visit Chuck, and we'll do like a bar from Dallas or like a fight night or something, and we can do our nonsense before it. Be awesome. That'd, it'd be awesome for sure. But that's what's great when we're playing, we plan. We we got to plan other things. So, yeah. So I feel like you know I feel like I need a Kiss Cruise funeral. <laughs> you know and there's, there's there's things that i you know i'm looking forward to doing new stuff though the 80s cruise looks amazing uh i'm gonna i want to i want to go out west and i, I want to do little little trips too i, I you know I'm, my kids are all at a certain window where i'd rather sacrifice one big trip with my wife and take them on two or three weekend trips in the summer because they're at an age that they're not gonna they're not gonna want to talk to me in a couple of years right you know what i mean right they're uh they're uh gonna hit that point in their life where yeah my dad's not cool no more right and my oldest gonna be 11 next week so 
this is the the next couple of years. It's just that something we need something new. That's all. And I can't do both, and I had to choose one, so I chose the eighty cruise. And I think you'll have a good time. Yeah, I'm sure. So when when that week comes around, we'll have some sort of. I'll have to be like hammered for the week, but uh, <laughs> it is what it is. Moving on. Right now, you know, uh, side note that I wasn't even going to talk about today. I didn't know if I told you that I was thinking about moving. Did I tell you this? Uh, I've been looking I, everywhere. Your wife shares some like. Uh, apartments and was talking about it or something like that i had saw like show up in my timeline it's so stressful dude yeah i'm sure moving sucks well i've moved nine times since 1997 so I, i'm used to it right and i've owned sold it's just every time it's stressful and i'm just in order to do a lot of stuff you know i live in a town that is just so god awful expensive and it's my own fault i'm not i'm not looking for any sympathy at all right but it's just so expensive here. It's ungodly expensive. And I pay a fortune in rent because I sold my place. Didn't know if I was going to stay here. Went looking at some places because I, I, I'm at the point now where I just have to free up some cash. I'm just I'm just strapped. I've become rent poor, which is retarded because I don't own nothing at the end of the day. Yeah, you're just hemorrhaging money because the cost of living in your town is fucking ridiculous. Right. And and I don't own a car. So if I do move out of town, I got to buy a car. So I looked at a bunch of places and then when you put my car payment, insurance and my commute, it all it comes out in the wash. I mean, it just the, the New York area is a mess. Right. It's so expensive. So it was either we move way out of the area cuz I don't really want to commute that far and pay all that money for cars and my wife don't drive and it it's gotten very stressful. We, my wife and I are arguing about it. I've been applying to jobs all over the country, and I, I, you know, it just gets to the point where you just want to just bang your head off a wall. So we found a place that was dirt cheap, and I don't think I talked about this, but my wife went and saw it. She was like, "Eh, you better come, come take a look." So I went, I went and saw it, dude. This thing hasn't been touched since the sixties. <laughs> the 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 appliances were from nineteen sixty three. We googled it. I've never seen it before, and everything in there. And I don't know if I did. I talk about this already. No. Okay, so it was just it was just because it's been I, I don't even know what I've what I've said about this and not because it was like it overwhelmed me for about a week and a half because I went it had a private yard which is a unicorn in Hoboken had a deck and it was cheap and it had two bedrooms and it had a two two extra rooms that were strange I was going to make one a bar poker room and that is a living room and then a, a weird changing room but the problem is is that it hasn't been touched since the sixties so we would have to do some sort of upgrading I mean it had paneling. It had outdoor lights inside. It was the strangest fucking thing, Mike. <laughs> but it did have a deck in a yard, and we were the only people that had access to it. But the bathroom, and I don't know if you're sitting down, but the bathroom was three by five. Oh, my God. <laughs> right. So the sink itself was six inches. Jeez. And it had a toilet, and you're looking at a shower, which was like, uh, it was 18 square inches. So, so I got to wedge my big ass. It's like putting a shark into a, into a fish bowl. So, like, you could literally take a shit and shower at the same time. You could. Yeah. I couldn't yeah. shave without the door open. Yeah, that's nuts. I've seen some bathrooms like that, and they're no bueno, man. You never get used to that. But I said to them, listen, and it had wallpaper with these little heads on it from the 60s and the, and the, the Austin Powers paper. And I said, all the, all the wallpaper's got to go. Right. So they said, listen, we'll take all the wallpaper out. We'll paint it and whatever. So then they, and I was like, all right, I'll do it. It's going to save me a tremendous amount of money, a huge amount of money. We're talking in pocket, maybe a thousand a month. True. Yeah, so that's a lot of scratch. So okay. I said, you know, I'm done. Then they call back like a day later and said, "Well, we need you to move in by the fifteenth." And I said, "Well, I can't do that." Of uh, January. Yeah, I'm like, are you out of your mind? You told me the first of February. And they said, "Well, it's either that, or we're going to we're going to show it to other people, and we'll see if we can rent it because we're pretty positive we'll rent it at that price." And I wrote back, well, if you update the appliances, I would I would pay the extra half a month and just move in on my leisure because it's that cheap. Right. And they said, nope, it's so cheap because it's as is, and the, they don't want to put any work into it. So my thought was, is what happens the first time something breaks or the first time I got to deal with some sort of nonsense? And I said, no, I just pulled out. But it was so stressful. We were arguing over it. So now, You know what I mean? So my, now we found another place, which is even cheaper than this <laughs> Which is even cheaper than this place, which is my wife is at now measuring. And I still don't know. I don't know whether it's smart just to keep being rent poor because I'm a, a diva. Because anything else I downsize to is going to be a disaster. We're not nowhere near as nice as what I have today. And this place is a four four store, four flights of stairs up. So you got to walk up four flights to get to the apartment. 
It's on the top floor, which is very, very common here because I had to walk up a few years back. And I went and saw it yesterday. It was nice. I just don't see where you fit a king-size bed anywhere. And it's a weird layout. It's like a railroad apartment. I'd have to show you. But the kitchen's big, and the living room's huge. And it's, it's an interesting layout. And I like the fact there's nobody above you. You know what I mean? And the views are great. A lot, of, a lot of light, and it's dirt cheap, but it's still, it's just very stressful. It's like, I didn't want to deal with it no more, so my wife is there now measuring. I said, I can't, I don't know where you put the fucking bed. <laughs> but I figured, you know, just moving in general is just so stressful. Yeah, since my wife and I have been together, we've moved uh, three times. And, you know, we moved in together, then we moved to another place, then we moved into the place that we're in now. And... Personally, I hate it, man. Like I was, you know, like I was kind of used to it from like the military. You move around a lot, right? Um, but yeah, it's tough. I don't, you know, I hate it. I really, it, it, it's moving is frustrating, and just you know, and just like you said, it's nerve wracking. Um, you know, trying to find a place and it, it, it's it, brutal. It, you know, it is. It's you know, it's brutal. We've actually considered moving from here. A couple times, you know, to, you know, a more more of a house location type deal. Right. right. With the backyard, things like that, um, because we're just in kind of an apartment building at this point in time. And, you know, we've considered moving into a house. We actually considered moving towns to like an hour and a half away. Uh, it's just but employment statuses. That's it. That. Right. Yeah, of so, course. That's the same boat I'm in. What, I mean, and I'm looking I look for jobs elsewhere. Right. And I still might. You know, I still, I still, who knows? But it's just, it's a lot of money to move to. You got to pay the security. Oh, it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's insane. It's the whole thing's insane. It's driving me absolutely berserk. But we'll see what happens. Right. And, you know, and like a job change is never easy either. No. Like, it's, like, you know, like I'm never going to find a job, right? I'm never going to find a job like I have now that pays as much as I get paid and gives me the leniency that I have now. <clears throat> You know, um, well, that's what I'm looking for. We're all looking for that. That's hard to find. It's ridiculous. Like I, I was so lucky when I got the job that I have now currently, and you know that's ending soon because the company itself is ending. So like that job is ending. You know, and thankfully I was in the right place at the right time, and I got another job, and I started at the beginning of the of the uh, new year. Right. But you know, it, it's going to take a little bit of adjustment. You know, anytime but, you switch a job, it takes it's a it's an adjustment period. Yeah, well, I mean, like financially and everything. So, you know, but we'll see what happens. Yeah. So I don't know. You're right, though. Trying to find and switch jobs. Oh, my God. It's just been a stressful time for me. So if anybody out there is not from the New York City area and has worked for me, fire, fire, fire the links my way. Yep. But who knows? Maybe I'll, go, I'll be done with recording here. I'll go downstairs, and she's like, ah, we worked it out, and we're going to move. So Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll uh, uh, make a new segment called Find Mike W. A Job. Yeah, or or if you're going to come over, my pals, you're going to have to walk up four flights of stairs. Right. Which, yeah, do, uh, do that. I don't mind doing it because we, now <laughs> I live on the second and third floor. So it's just literally it's like two more flights just to get to the apartment. So that's not that big a deal. Oh, yeah, true. And it's, I li- I'd rather have that in the quiet. And my wife does uh, the stair climb every year for, the, for multiple sclerosis. So she'll go up to 30 Rock in the 1,266 steps. So the four flights there is just like nothing. Right. You know, piece of cake. So. Well, we'll see. I'll talk to her then. But it is. It's just such a stressful time. It's been fucking driving me nuts. All right. Two more things I'm going to talk to this week. One thing is something that just fried me. I just, I had the thought when you're drinking too much, you ever get that, you know, your mind starts wandering or like oh, if you're high. For sure. And I had this crazy thought that, uh, that I'm going insane in the brain. Like me, it's going insane. That's because I was reading this article about the Kepler telescope. I don't know if you remember this thing. This is like this telescope that's been out there for a while. In 2013, they said it stopped working. And then a bunch of engineers got together and figured out that they can get it to work again. I think so. Yeah, just Google it. Right. Kepler, K-E-P-L-E-R, Kepler telescope. So the Kepler telescope found a super Earth. Did you see this? NASA's Kepler telescope uh, discovers an alien super Earth 180 light years away, which to me is amazing. So it's like... uh, Two and a half times the size of Earth, and they said the atmosphere, we could be able to land there and breathe. It'd just be a little cooler because of their size and the distance to the sun or right. the star there. But the fact that we could go there and breathe and land is bizarre to me. It's amazing. Right? I mean, just think about all the different planets out there. If, if they can find this, there, you know there's other planets out there like this. Of course. I mean, because, 
and we've like kind of touched on this, be- you know, briefly before. It's the universe is infinite as far as they know, right? Right. And it just never ends, and it's huge, and um, there are billions and billions of planets and galaxies. You know, like we we are so small compared to how many galaxies and planets are out there. And the longer life goes on, I think the more and more places we're going to find like this. And I think eventually we're going to find some fucking life too. Oh, some, I think it's inevitable. It, it really is. I mean, I told you once before that they said that even if the odds were, uh, there's so many planets and solar systems and galaxies in the world that if the odds were, one in a, I think it's one in a trillion yeah. that uh, alien life exists. Three planets in every galaxy would have life on it. Yeah, that's crazy, <laughs> right? Like, and that's if the odds were one in a, in a trillion. It's it, it's insane. I'm reading this here, and it says they estimate the new planet to be two and a half times the diameter of Earth and follows a nine day orbit around its sun that's smaller and cooler than our sun. Uh, this the finding is. Significant because planets of this size aren't very common in our solar system. But still, so, it's amazing. Would be nine of our days is what they're saying, right? It just says that uh, it just takes a nine-day orbit around the star. But still, imagine. I mean, it's just very, very crazy. Right. It makes my brain fry. But what, the, what got me thinking is that what if we went to a planet like this and there was life? But, you know, we always watch these movies where these, these alien technology comes in. It just blows our technology away, and we're always at a disadvantage. What if we were the technology, the technological advanced species? Like, we came in. They're a bunch of cavemen. Well, we would uh, do what we do. Just take the planet over and rape them and kill them. <laughs> That's exactly what would happen. Uh, I mean, it's it would be uh, Christopher Columbus all, like, all over again, but with technology. Right. It would be amazing. For sure. We would take it over. The Apocalypto 2. Yep. And there would be, you know, a billion people on that planet within, you know, fucking 20 years. Because <laughs> <laughs> people can't stop fucking breeding for some reason. Yeah. And imagine getting some alien ass. I mean, we would tap in everything. Oh, for sure. It, it, it would be, uh, you know, we would destroy the planet very, very quickly. And the people that were on it. And we would take it over. Oh, I love it. Absolutely love it. So let's move over to let's let's finish out with some news. Speaking of crazy relationships and what would happen if we went there, Jared Kreft. Here's one. Here's here's a great Christmassy news story. I'm just going to play the video. Okay. Fifty one seconds, and then we can discuss Jared Kreft. I want to warn you. This next story has some disturbing details. It's new at midnight. This Wausau man is in jail after being charged with performing sexual acts on a horse. The criminal complaint says last Wednesday night, Marathon County Sheriff's deputies found 30-year-old Jared Kraft in a barn in the town of Wausau. Police say he had a jar of petroleum jelly, and he told them he had performed sexual acts on a male horse and watched horse pornography that night. It's unique. Um, we don't have very many, many of them in the county or um, really across the country, so it's definitely a unique case. Online court records do not list an attorney for Kraft. He's in custody at Marathon County Jail with a $2,000 cash bond. Kraft has been charged with bestiality and possession of drug paraphernalia and marijuana. A preliminary hearing is set for tomorrow morning. Well, there you go. So, um... It's in banging horses. Forecasting the weather. Some... Whoops. Yeah, so he's... Yeah, it said he was arrested here in Marathon, Marathon County, Wausau, in a Wausau barn. This is, uh, I guess, in Wisconsin. Wausau, Wisconsin. When they arrived... Kreft was near a horse wearing a face mask, black jacket, blue wind pants with holes cut in the areas of the crotch and butt. <laughs> he had a marijuana pipe and a jar of petroleum jelly. Police said he admitted that he had perfor- been performing oral sex on the horse in the barn, uh, uh, which came about after viewing horse pornography. Uh, oh, boy. Oh, my but I God. I want to know this, right? Like, when we were listening to that clip and we were listening to that newscaster say it you know and talk about the story you know kudos to them to be able to tell that story in a straight you know in a straight manner with you know with a straight face without fussing out laughing or just going ugh. <laughs> yeah because if, if you and i were on like channel two news i'd be like oh hold on a second mike this guy's fucking horses 
Like what? He's Ooh. smoking joints and blowing what? <laughs> Wait a minute. Is, is somebody screwing at me with the teleprompter? Am I being pumped? Are we live? <laughs> is this satire? What the fuck? What is happening here? <laughs> this guy's smoking a horse? The guy's sucking a horse's cock. He's blowing Mr. Ed? <laughs> and snapping ribs? Snapping what? ribs and, and, and nipping nips. It's unbelievable. He was charged with sexual gratification with an animal sex organ. Imagine, uh, what's your charge, sir? Sexual gratification with an animal sex organ. Poor guy, man. Like, they shouldn't even arrest the fuck. I mean, uh, sticking a horse's cock in your mouth, I think, is punishment enough. I guess that it's not punishment for him, though. He loves it. He loves <laughs> oh, my God. He had possession of drug par- paraphernalia, possession of marijuana as a repeat offender, and bail jumping. But, like, w- n- say he cleans his act up, right? Say he finds Christ or something, and he goes to prison and he gets he gets he walks the straight and narrow and he becomes a model citizen the next time every time he applies for a job have you been arrested of a felony and you have to hit yes and what was it and you got to put on their sexual gratification with an animal sex organ who's hiring you nobody you'd be better off having a you know, big a and law belt buckle yeah yeah you definitely couldn't get a job at any sort of zoo <laughs> no you're not going to the to the zoo is or that a felony? Is that what they said? That that's a felony? I have no idea, but I'm sure it's not a misdemeanor. Yeah, I mean, if you know, if it is a felony, horse he's fucked. C. Yeah, horsey, horse cack. But like, <laughs> he, he can't even he can't even clean stables, right? Because if I'm like, if I own, say, like a horse racing barn, I don't even want him cleaning the stable. Right. No, I don't him. want him anywhere near my animals. Yeah, we blow the horse. Right. For sure. Get behind it on a, on a step stool. Right. So bizarre. Uh, I don't understand people today. I really don't. No, you know, and you get these people too that, you know, and like you'll get people who are, you know, super compassionate about the human race, right? Uh, let's just say liberals <laughs> or or just some really crazy compassionate people that are like, oh, well, you know, maybe he's fucked up and, you know, where is, you know, our place to judge and, you know, maybe it's normal for him. Fine you dude that's not normal putting a horse cock in your mouth is not fucking normal no you need some sort of home some sort of psychiatric treatment something like it's not just because it's okay to him doesn't make it okay just because he can unhinge his jaw like a boa yeah i mean it's not okay it's not okay to blow horses and he had petroleum jelly so obviously he was looking to get something shoved up his fucking ass too oh my god Kim, i don't even want to think about that no, I mean that's. I mean that guy died. the 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 famous guy that used to fuck horses. I forget his name. Mister Something. He he he. I uh, used to call himself, and he posted a video online of of of, of a horse. It was like national news. That's disgusting, dude. He posted a video of a horse sticking its dick up his ass, and like he like you know he kind of went Ugh! like you can see it like you know like his body. You know, it's a fucking like a three foot dick. Uh, he died like two not. days later. Two minutes later. No, like three days later, he oh. died. Like internal bleeding, it fucked his shit up. I mean, it's like sticking Anyone a baseball bat right in now. Your Anyone else turned on right now? <laughs> I fucking hope not. Jesus Christ, Master, dude, it's, it's you shouldn't be out in public. I don't like big dicks. <laughs> it's a mess. That's a mess. That's a disaster. Don't yep. forget to cup the balls. Petroleum jelly. <laughs> Horse cock. So I'll tell you, Dale. Now, he's doing court on Tuesday afternoon. But then when you go under, and on the bottom, it has beastly beastly accusations. And then people's pictures, mugshots. Curtis Peterson pled guilty to bestiality and was sentenced in April of 2013 uh, between 1 and 15 years for having sex with two dogs. Winner. Brandon Fanning, 19, having sex with a dog and an underage male. Okay. He'll do well in prison. Yeah. Kevin Parrish from Lyon, Oregon, said that he lost control with Kudo, his grandmother's nine-pound chihuahua, so he grabbed the dog, started punching it in the head with his fist. Then he tried to strangle the dog and then put it in the oven, had preheated to 350 degrees for his lunch. He was arrested and booked. So, uh, yeah, he ate the dog. So there you go. Now, you you need to tell me he don't have it. Do you need help? Um, Another owner, uh, an owner and breeder of the world-class miniature horses in Florida, had video surveillance footage of the person who was sexually assaulting their horses and killing their dog. The sexual acts were going on for 
since May of 2012. Jesus Christ. What is wrong with these people? Like, what is wrong with, with, with fucking people? Right. The guy, the owner, said, these are my babies. I've raised them, and now it's affected me psychologically. It's hard to put them in the stall when I can't. If this guy's coming in, he's banging this guy's horses. What is wrong with all these people? I mean, like, who sits around one day? You know, I mean, at what point of your life are you sitting around and you go, you know, I'm really not attracted to women. I, I, there, there's, there's, there's just something about a horse cock that gets me going. Yeah, who says that? At what point does, does, you know, does that happen to you mentally? At what point? Well, what about Malcolm Brenner? In his book entitled The Wet Goddess, Malcolm wrote about his nine-month romantic and sexual affair between him and a dolphin named Dolly. Oh, my goodness. I mean, obviously, it uh, doesn't just horse. It's there's dolphins. Like, yeah. Like, I'm almost speechless. Like, there's almost, like, dead air time because it, it's hard for me to really come up with any kind of logical thing to say because it's not a logical thing. But then you get stuff that comes. Th- these get better. Geraldo Perez, 50 years old, was on a tour on a tour group looking at the Chicago, Chicago Animal Shelter, and he disappeared. And when the rest of the group found him, he was having sex with a pit bull. <laughs> Unreal. <laughs> That's amazing. If we were on a tour, we're like, we're at like, bye to we. We're trying to figure out what dog to bring home. Hey, what happened to that old Spanish cat that was in the back? <laughs> did, we, did we lose somebody? Head count. <laughs> These in the back just destroying a pit bull. I guess he picked his dog he's taking home. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what goes through people's minds whatsoever. I just, I just don't know though. I just don't know how they choose an animal over a human being. I don't get it. Here's, don't a, here's a great one: Eric Antunes and the oral sex loophole. When officials searched the computer and cell phone of this Florida man, big shock, they allegedly found child pornography as well as photos of him engaged in sex acts with his girlfriend's three-legged dog. So he, he don't care if the dog only got three legs. <laughs> he doesn't judge. The 29-year-old was arrested on charges of child pornography and bestiality, but prosecutors ultimately dropped the bestiality charges on the grounds of a technicality. This was a development raised the question of whether or not in Florida bestiality laws contain an oral sex loophole. Oh, my Lord. Well, well at least the, the serious, serious charge isn't going to get dropped. Now, that's something that, in my opinion, that nobody can ever come back from is some sort of child abuse like that, you know. From child porn to, uh, 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 you know, to molesting a kid. That's just something that, in my opinion, can never, can, isn't really forgivable. No, I would agree. I don't care how many times you go to fucking church and say you're sorry afterwards. No, you for know, sure. I, that's just something to me that. But there's something so wrong with, with all of that. Right. All that stuff that we're discussing here. And yes, this is, I don't know where, how this got onto uh, this topic today, but. It's it's just there's something not right. 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 And that's it. You know, and I don't want I mean, to hear I'm all for a little kinky shit now and then. <laughs> and I don't want to hear anybody say, oh, well, you know, this person was abused when they were a kid. So therefore they abuse kids themselves or animals or whatever. You know, it's it, 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 it's not right. It, animals, kids. I'm looking at this here. Another one. Douglas Spink, 51 years old, was arrested because they uh, officials caught him running a bestiality farm in Washington state. Right up near the Canadian border. Spink had dozens of horses, dogs, and mice, which visitors would come and pay money for them to engage in sexual acts with. I mean, forget brothels. <laughs> this is like a brothel. This is like putting gerbils up your ass and shit. It's a fucking animal whorehouse. Where it, right. It's fucking nuts. <laughs> what is happening here? <laughs> it, it's, it's, I just don't get it. You know, I don't get it. I mean, pe- I mean people know what they're doing. They, you can't blame anything on a- anything. You know, you know what you're doing. <laughs> All I know is this started becoming a, uh, a segment about one guy and a horse, and it turned into... Why, why is wrong with the world today? What's wrong with the world today? Wow. Hey, I mean, it's fine. It, you know, it, it's, it's what the fuck, because this stuff should be talked about. I'm sorry. If you're listening out here, these are the kinds of things that we should, that we need to bring attention to the world there are people out there running animal whorehouses if you want to talk animal whorehouses to mike and mike you know what we have to say about that you've got a friend in me you've got a friend in me <laughs> when the road looks rough ahead and you're miles and miles 
miles from your nice warm bed. You just remember what your old past said. If you gave some dog head, you got a friend in me. If you're giving a Doberman pinch your head, you got a friend in me. Now, these are the pe- people that Anonymous should be attacking. Absolutely. These. Now, Anonymous, if anybody out there, if you're listening to this, if you're going to hack anybody, hack these bestiality groups, man. Hack these whorehouses right. that are charging people to put gerbils up their ass and horse cock in their mouth. These are the people you sh- you should be shutting down, not a 12-year-old's Xbox. Shut it down completely. I don't care if they're going up getting the undigested nuts from the holiday fruitcake. No way. No way this should be going on. No, no way. I agree 100%. Wow. I wonder what the age of consent is on bestiality. Like if the, the, <laughs> does that even – is that an extra charge? Like if it's a puppy? <laughs> puppy abuse, man. They, I don't know. They're, they're going to have like Lassie's list. If you're a 42-year-old woman and you put, like, some peanut butter in your chucho and you let, like, a dog come and lick it out, I mean, is there – what if the dog's only, like, three months old? Is that an extra charge? <laughs> I wonder if there's a website like Megan's Law. I think I think there should be. I think that I should be informed if there's a dog fucker in, in my neighborhood. Especially I agree. If I have a dog. Like a Marmaduke Law. Right, right, right. Like law. Lassie's List. Yeah, Lassie's List. There you go. I mean, because, you know, I mean – like, you know, like if my neighbor likes to stick his dick in dogs' asses and I have a dog that I keep outside sometimes. <laughs> and I see him on Lassie's list. I'm not moving there. Right. For, right. For sure. Or I'm going to monitor the entire time that my dog is outside because I don't want to come to call him in to get his biscuit and see a guy mounting him. You know, I mean, bad things would happen to that guy. A lot of bad things would happen there. For sure. You know. Wow. It is what it is, but it's crazy. And. There's just no logical explanation. These, pe- these people are fucked up. I think we're fucked up for talking about it for so long. I think so, too. I mean, you know, it, 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 it really spiraled out of control. It really did. It, it, but, you know, it is what it is, and this is what happens. Listen, if you're a 42-year-old woman, don't blow a 17-year-old in Pennsylvania, and don't be putting mice up your ass or blowing a horse in uh, Wisconsin. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. So thanks for listening. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, uh, did you have anything else before we wrap it up? No, 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 no. I, I think, uh, I think ending on the animal sexual abuses. There you go. Is proper. So follow us on theothermikes.com. Make sure you give us a, a good review on iTunes. Go tell your friends. Tell everybody. Check us out. Interact with us on Twitter and all the social media. And Mike will be on that. I'm sorry for the folks that sent me direct messages. It takes me a while. I'm a little slow, but it's the holidays. Uh, everybody have a good New Year. Enjoy whatever you decide to do. Shoulder dip that shit. Yes, because the next time you hear from us, it will be 2015. That's right, 2015. And until next week, uh, until 2015, I'm Mike W. And I'm Mike T. I'm going to end the show with a little Age of Consent, apropos, one of my favorite New Order songs. It's time for me to dip the shoulder. Bitches. Mike, 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 Mike. What day is it, Mike? What day is it, Mike? Mike, 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 Mike. What day is it, Mike? Mike, 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 Mike. What day is it, Mike? Mike, 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 Mike. What day is it, Mike? Mike, 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 Mike. What day is it, Mike? Hold the dip, hold the dip, hold the dip, hold the dip, hold the dip. Hold the dip, hold the dip. And not the kind of likes to tell you just what I. You know how stupid that sounds? The slime eating dog, scum sucking. I saw you this morning, thought that you might like to know. Big, you sons of a motherless goat. I messages for a few days ago. I understood every word that it said. And now that I've actually heard it, you're going to regret. You know how stupid that sounds? Mike, 
warning. The following is very disturbing. If you are easily offended or have a weak stomach, please leave now. She said, pardon me, sir, while I go into the kitchen and fuck the chicken. to suck a dick where I feel like I'm in power. I'll be able to slap it, but I'm not going to have time to flip it and rub it down. I'll be able to slap it, but I'm not going to have time to flip it and rub it down. 